Good morning, good morning. Very good to see you this morning. Welcome and may you experience the surprise of God's presence and God's gifts to you this morning. Also those of you following online, um, welcome and uh, may you also experience over time and space that we are still connected. We are um, busy with a series and today we are exactly in the middle of the series. We did the previous two themes, the previous two weeks. We started with um, God surprising us now here, not nowhere. The space then gone um, and God being present where we are and um, in every moment of our lives. Then last week we focused on God surprising us with God's presence and communication through nature. And I really hope this week you could have experienced something of seeing and experiencing God and the connectedness uh, with nature. And today we are focusing on uh, surprised by God in people. If you want to um, perhaps look at the previous um, versions, you're welcome to follow it uh, on YouTube. Um, the text of all three sermons, today's sermon, is already also on our website. So if you want to, uh, for instance, look at some of the poems or prayers that's been used, you can find it there. If you are following online and you'd like to follow um, the liturgy, the bulletins, um, they are posted every week um, on the website. You can just Google CCRC Clifton Park and then you will find our website and go to resources and you will find the bulletins there. Um, so the bulletins and the text of the sermons are already posted. Today's liturgy, there will be a little change. The prayer of confession will move to a latter part. You'll see it is like that in the bulletin, but it is different than usual. You will, you will pick up why it is like that because of the sermon. Um, we will become aware of our lack of presence. So we are moving that part of uh, the, the liturgy to after the sermon. And then, many surprises today. Um, we're talking about the theme of surprises, but uh, hospitality also has a surprise for you. So if when you walk out, there will be a special surprise for you. And those of you... Um, following online, sorry we can't email the surprise, it's physical, but if you come by the, the office, we will have some extras for you, so please pop in for the surprise. Thank you, hospitality, for your hospitality. And today is a Super Bowl Sunday, so yeah, may the best team win and celebrate humanity today. And, and really you'll find the theme that we're going to uh, considered today will resonate also in the excitement and the joy and the beauty and playfulness of, of mankind and humankind. The announcements this morning will be done by uh, Jim Tuttle and he's the co-chair of finance. Good morning. Good morning. Make your reservations today for Passport to Party, Congregational Dessert Party and Basket Auction on March 5th. Sign up to reserve your seat after worship in the hearth room. Tickets are $12 per person. Uh, also, please sign up to write a Lenten devotion for our annual Lenten booklet. Signatures are listed on the sign-up sheet on the kiosk and were sent in an email. Please contact the office to choose a reading. Thank you for that. Also, please sign up on the kiosk to contact or contact the office to join the Lenten Bible study series on Wednesday at noon or 7 p.m. Uh, the program is In View of God's Mercy. New Kerygma series will start in March. Please see your bulletin insert for more information on the Kerygma series. Consistory nomination ballots uh, were emailed last week. Please return your completed ballot to the office by February 27th. Uh, there's a separate box. Don't put them in the general church, uh, church box. Uh, and ushers and greeters are needed for March. Please sign up on the kiosk for ushers and greeters in March. Now let us prepare to worship God.
Good morning, beloved. Please stand in body or spirit and join me in the call to worship. You are closer to me than my own breath. May each breath I take deepen my awareness of your presence. You are as real as the sounds around me. May each sound I hear deepen my awareness of your reality. You are as present and life-giving as my own heart. May each heartbeat I experience deepen my awareness of your love. You embrace me as certainly as the clothes I wear. May each sensation I feel deepen my awareness of your loving presence. In Genesis 28, Jacob thought the following, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was unaware of it. How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate to heaven. May mercy and peace and love be with you in abundance. In the name of God Almighty, Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
seated. We are deeply connected to God through God's love. Romans 8 verse 35 just confirms that who will separate us from the love of God? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No. In all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we are loved and God is love. And that's why we are made in the image of God. So our deepest being, our deepest identity is the identity of the image of God, love. And that's why we are called to love. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not love God, does not know God. For God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent His only Son to, into the world so that we might live through Him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the anointing sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God if we, live, if we love one another, God lives in us and His love is perfected in us. Our Psalter reading this morning from Psalm 8. Our Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is Your name in all the earth. You have set Your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, You have found a bulwark because of your foes, to silence the enemy and the avenger. We are the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have established. What are human beings? That you are mindful of them. Mortals, that you care for them. You have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. Our Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Good morning. Before I invite the children to join me, it is Super Bowl Sunday, and we have collected soups. So I would like to ask the kids and the big kids to please help us bring forward the soups for our community basket, please.
Thank you. Good morning. How are you today? Good. Yes. Me too. It is Super Bowl Sunday. Today is the day we all become football fans, whether we have a team in the game or not, right? All right. So, this morning I want to start by telling you something that God said. God said, now let's make humans who will be like us. They will rule over all the fish in the sea and the birds in the air. They will rule over all the large animals and all the little things that crawl on the ground. God created humans in his own image, created to be like God's self. The Bible tells us that God created us in God's image and likeness. Now, if I look in this mirror, I can see my image, can't I? Yes. Now, can you see your image when you look in the mirror? Is that you in there? No. No? <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> yes, that's you in a mask, right? Derek, you in there? Yes. So, what does it mean to be made in God's image? What it means is that when God looks at us, God wants to see himself. God wants us to be like this mirror. Now, I was thinking about this, and I realized God doesn't have a face. God doesn't have a body. God is a spirit. So how can God see God's spirit when he looks at us? Well, God wants to see our, his spirit in our behavior. So let's think of ways that we could be like God. Can you think of any? What are things we could do that are like the things that God does? What do you think? We can do this. <laughs> yes. We can hold the whole world in our hands, right? How do we do that? By loving and caring for others. That's one way that we can hold others. We can forgive. We can listen. God listens to us when we pray, doesn't he? We can be kind and fair and honest. And we can share with people who need help. We should also try to see God in other people as well. So when I look at the three of you, I can find that piece of God that's in there. God's goodness is in all people because God created every one of us. God is pleased when we try to connect with God by being a friend to all people. So look for the good part in everyone you meet and see if you can find God inside them and let them see the God in each of you. A few years ago, a man named Donnie visited us and spoke to our youth group. I think some of our older kids will remember that night. What I remember most about Donnie's story is when he told us that he doesn't see God in the building of the church. He sees God in other people. God wants us 
God wants to see, to look at us, and to see that we are acting like him. And then God will say, yes, I can see myself in Christina, and in Alex, and in Derek. And it will be like God is looking in a mirror, because we are acting like God. So can we pray? Dear Lord, thank you for making us to be like you. Help us to act more like you every day so that you can see yourself in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Join me in the thanksgiving sentences. There are different gifts, but it is the same Spirit who gives them. There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same Lord who is served. God works through different people in different ways, but it is the same God who achieves His purpose through them all. Each one is given a gift by the Spirit.
Let us pray. In this moment, draw me to yourself, God, and make me aware not so much of what I've given as all that I've received, and so that yet I have to share. Send me forth in power and gladness and with great courage to live out in the world what I pray and confess, that in sharing I may do justice, make peace, grow in love, enjoy myself, other people, and your world now and you forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning from Genesis 1, verse 24. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. And let them have domination over the fish in the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind, in his image. In the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish in the sea and over the birds in the air, over the living thing that moves over the earth. And God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth, every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird in the air, and to every thing that creeps on the earth, everything that has a breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw what he made. And indeed, it was very good. And there was, it was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. From 2 Corinthians 3, verse 1 first, and then later uh, we will read from verse 17. Are we beginning to commend ourselves again? Surely we do not need, as some do, letters of recommendation to you or from you, do we? You yourselves are our letter, written on our hearts to be known and read by all. And you show that you are a letter of Christ, prepared by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit and the living God, not on tables of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Verse 17. Now the Lord is a, a Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. All of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror. 
are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to the other. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. And from the Gospels, uh, we're going to read uh, from Luke 24, verse 13. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all the things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other um, while you were walking? They stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name is Cleopas, said, uh, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place um, there these days? And then there are six verses um, where they explain to Jesus what happened. Then, from verse 25, Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe um, all that, uh, that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer all these things, and then enter to, into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted them um, the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it's almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? We only read up to verse 32. This is the word of the Lord. The famous painter Rembrandt painted this very interesting story about um, the Emmaus pathway and the people on the disciples on that uh, path seven times in his life. The first time that he, um, show, he painted this was in 1629, when he was only 22 years old. He portrayed the moment of surprise when uh, Cleopas uh, recognized that Jesus was the one on the table with them. And notice that Jesus is on the right-hand side of the painting, and there are not much detail about Jesus in the painting, just the outline. And then uh, a few years later, in 1634, Rembrandt got married, and then... Again, he sketched a new painting. Again, the point of recognition. But you can see Jesus is much clearer than previously um, um, that he painted earlier. But still, Jesus is, as you can see, on the right-hand side of the painting. And then, in 1642, that seven years uh, later, uh, eight years later, Rembrandt's wife and three of his four children died, and the tragedy had a traumatic impact on his life and on his painting. So he put his hand on painting on the canvas again, and this time he depicted the moment where Jesus vanished from their sight. Suddenly, 
After this traumatic experience, Jesus is gone, not visible. Still, Jesus being placed on the right-hand side of the painting. But in 14, uh, 1648, um, Jesus moves to the center of the painting. And there are more people at the painting. Unfortunately, his circumstances changed again, so that in 1654, he depicted Christ in the middle of the scene, as the previous time, but it was a very difficult time in his life. He had no job, he ran out of money, he married his third wife, and um, the only work that he could find was to work for the child of his first wife. So it was a very difficult time, but still he experienced in the difficulty that Jesus is present and in the center of that um, image. And then in 1655, um, the sixth version, um, a second change came. Suddenly, he depicted um, Christ as appearing to the disciples on the road to Emmaus. Rembrandt felt that Jesus is still with him on the path of life. But every time you will see, he uses um, a halo or the light shining. And then in the last work, just before his death, there's not a lot of detail that you can see there, but that's exactly how he did it. Um, Jesus is suddenly now walking, not on the side of the painting, but in the middle. And no halo, as if Jesus is really present as another person on his path of life. Jesus present, as with the disciples, in their distress, sadness and shock. Jesus present with him in life. It was really fascinating for me to see and to pick up the connection between his relationships with, um, with his family and his experience of God as absent or God as present. I've had numerous experiences of the same um, uh, idea in my conversations with many people uh, in pastoral counseling. Many times people tell me they feel that God is far or God is absent. Then I would ask them, how long have you been experiencing this feeling? Then they would say, so many years or months. And then I would usually ask, uh, was there any, were there any significant events um, at that time? And so many times there were events like um, relational stress or divorce or um, sickness in the family or deep relational pain. But the, 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 the pain in relationships or the death or the sickness had a huge impact on their relationship with God. And that's interesting to, to see that's what we also find um, with uh, the story in Luke. And if you listen to the story, they experience God is gone, God forgot them. And that's how it starts. The first scene of the story starts with they experience um, God is not there, and they're sad, and they're discouraged and disheartened. And the last scene of this whole story is where they experience joy and hope. Were our hearts not burning within us we are, while he was talking on the road and opening the scriptures? Tears of sadness move to tears of joy and hope. And what made the difference? The stranger on the road was God. The stranger on the road, they met Jesus. He was present in the uh, pain and in, the, in the, uh, the stress that they had, in the grief, but as a stranger. And the way that Jesus moved them from this experience of absence of God to experience of the presence of God was by listening attentively of being present with him, although they didn't see him. And through their hospitality, they opened up the possibility of meeting God in a stranger. Imagine what would have happened if they did not talk to the stranger or did not walk with the stranger. What would have happened if they were reluctant to listen to the stranger? What would have happened if they did not invite Jesus in? It was so beautifully written that Jesus made as if he was going to walk on. But he said, no, 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 don't come back. Abide with me. That's where the song also comes from. And what would have happened if they did not offer him bread? 
or make some time for the stranger. They would have missed the experience of God, Jesus, um, present in their lives. And that's very interesting. The same thought line we find in Matthew 25, when um, we find that the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was uh, it that we saw you hungry, gave you food, or thirsty, and gave you something to drink? And when it was um, it that you saw us as a stranger, and you welcomed us, or naked, and you gave us clothing? And when was it and you saw us sick or in prison and visited us? And then the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. If you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. So if we live with a different attitude, with an openness and awareness to the people on the road, known people and unknown strangers, we open the possibility of meeting God every day. Mother Teresa once said, um, the core of her mission is that every day we first go and we meditate on Jesus and then we go out to look for Him in disguise. First we meditate on Jesus, then we go look, where can we find Jesus in disguise? And if we look deeper with eyes of faith and discernment, you will be able to see the image of God and God's presence in the people around us. And then the holy moments, the moments of miracle and the moments of meeting God will be everyday moments. And if we do not look with more than our eyes and listen with more than our ears, the person that we see would be the teller um, or the person just walking down the street or a meal like any other but if we look with eyes of faith and listen with more than our ears, with our whole being, from the one miracle moment to the next miracle, whom we might see is Jesus himself. You will probably know the song uh, of Joan Osborne's, um, One of Us, if God had a name, what would it be? And uh, would you call it by his faith, face? What if God was one of us? Just a slob like one of us. Just a stranger on the bus trying to make his way home. If God had a face, what would it look like? And what would you want to see? If seeing meant that you would have to believe. If we live with a different way and we ask, how would God look? Diverse as you are here, as the, uh, the humanity were created. And you, would f you will feel God's hug in the hug of a friend. You would experience the gift of God through the gift of maybe uh, somebody in your family. And a smile from a stranger on the street could be an experience of the smile of God. The hug of your loved one is the hug of God. Advice or a warning or a word of wisdom could be a special word from God. Even a text on your phone or a call could be a connection with God. Dietrich Bonhoeffer said, Next to the blessed sacrament itself, your neighbor is the holiest object presented to your senses. Next to the blessed sacrament itself, your neighbor is the holiest object presented to your senses. And if he is your Christian neighbor, he is holy in almost the same way, for in him also Christ is truly hidden. Christ is truly hidden. And I want to ask you just for a moment now to just look around and, and um, look at the people around you and just become aware that as you look at each other and you look each other in the eye and you can... Make eye contact or just be aware. And also those following online, they, um, John is giving a, a view of the whole congregation. You can even look at the camera. And there is a connection if we look in a different way. We see Christ. And God is not absent. 
And that's exactly what uh, Genesis 1 verse 26 confirms. That we were created in the image of God. Yes, there was a fall. But our deepest, deepest, truest being is that we are original goodness. Original, made in the image of God. As Desmond Tutu said, we are fundamentally co uh, good. That is the core. And uh, even Psalm 4 says, What are human beings that you are mindful of them? Maybe you can ask the question. Um, what are human beings that you, not God, that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for? Why would you care and why would you mind other people? And then Psalm 8 says, Yet you have made them a little lower than God. Literally in the Hebrew, Elohim, God. A little lower than God. And crown them with glory and honor. So if we really look with eyes of faith, and that is the invitation to look and live with eyes of faith and discernment. Because that's the essential work of religion. Is that it should help us to recognize and recover the divine image in everything and in everyone. And that we start to mirror who we really are. How God made us. Maybe you're just sitting on the edge of your chair and saying, Pastor, you don't know my mother-in-law or my parents or my co-worker. You want me to see God's image in him? No way. <laughs> it is true that uh, the image of God can sometimes be deeply, deeply buried in people's lives. And we, we struggle to see and look for signs of God. But I really want to urge you, as a Nadia Bols Weber uh, uh, um, theologian wrote a book, really a thought-provoking book, Accidental Saints, Finding God in All the Wrong People. Um, and it's really what he's written about, that if you really open, you will be surprised by God in people in whom you would have not expected. Even, yes, your mother-in-law or whoever you think of, God is not present there. There is a beautiful scene in The Lion King where Rafiki and Simba have this talk and he says, you have to look at your reflection in the water and uh, you, should, you will see something of your father. So that's what Simba did. He looked down into the water and he just saw his own face. And, he, and then Rafiki said, do it again. And he looked again and just saw his own face. Then Rafiki just uh, moved the water a bit and he said, look harder, Simba. Look harder. And then as he looked into the water, he saw the image of his father coming through. <laughs> Sorry. But that's the, that's the invitation. Look harder, people. God is present in all of us, in people that you don't even think would be. And you will be surprised by God. The deepest reality of nature is that we are connected. We are interrelated. There is an inescapable network of mutuality between us in Christ. Everyone in the cosmic Christ, we are connected. That's what Colossians 3 verse 1 says. In the renewal, there is no longer Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all in all. And that's only with, with, with our vision of faith that we can experience that. And that's why love, the deepest aspect of life, is the consciousness of really belonging, of being connected in Christ. Thomas Merton once wrote a beautiful piece as he was walking in Louisville in Kentucky. He said um, uh, he was walking on the corner of 4th and Walnut Streets uh, in the center of the shopping district. Uh, he says, I was suddenly overwhelmed by the realization that I love all these people and that they are mine. Sorry, I'm emotional now. <laughs> um, and that they, are, they were mine and I were theirs. And that we could not be alien to one another. Even though they are total strangers. It was like waking from a dream of separateness. 
We are not separate. Then he says, this sense of liberation from the illusionary difference was such a relief and such a joy to me, I almost started to laugh out loud. And if only everybody could realize this, but it cannot be explained. There is no way of telling people that they are walking around shining like the sun. That's who you are. That's who you are. Walking around shining like the sun and with eyes of faith, you will see that. I see that in each of you. I see that every day where, where I walk. God is not absent. The one that is absent is me or you. Because we are not open to the possibility that God could actually be present in the person, the stranger walking past. And the invitation for us this uh, today is to then become the reality of presence of God, the image of God as you, you have contact with other people. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18 says, Nothing between us and God. Our faces shining with the brightness of His face. He's talking to the Corinthians. Read the book Corinthians. You'll see all the things that they done. It's, it's really, what they did was really amazing. <laughs> you, you can't believe congregations did things as wrong as they did. <laughs> but even, even though they, they took each other to court and there were sexual, um, really bad things happening in the congregation, the rich people ate all the um, bread and the, the, drank the wine at Holy Communion. Still, he says, our faces shining with the brightness of His face. And so we are transfigured, much like the Messiah. Our lives gradually becoming brighter and more beautiful as God enters our lives and become like Him. So we become the living proof for other people that God is present. God is love. And our hands and our eyes and our beings, our bodies, become the presence of God to other people. Just listen to this beautiful poem. It's also on the front cover of the bulletin. Not merely by the words you say, not only in your deeds confessed, but the most unconscious way is Christ expressed. Is it the beatific smile, a holy light on your brow? Oh no, I felt his presence while you laughed just now. It was for me, not the truth you taught so clear, uh, to you so clear, to me so dim. But when you came to me, you brought a sense of him. And from your eye, he beckons me. From your heart, his love is shed. Till I lose sight of you and see Christ instead. I lose sight of you and I see Christ through your eyes. In practice for this week, I want to invite you, especially in this post-COVID time, that we really um, give a lot of attention to the relationships in our lives. Uh, family, friends, and colleagues, we need to rebuild relationships that, uh, that really uh, went through a lot of strain. Invite somebody for coffee or a meal or at least phone them or send a text. Um, and look differently at the strangers that you meet every day. There's an article written um, by Mike Frost. A lonely crowd, churches dying due to friendlessness. <laughs> and that's the other invitation that, that uh, a, a congregation can also be like just a lonely crowd. Because they are friendly, but they're not friends. And, and we are invited to be friends. And even today, one other last practical thing, if it's Super Bowl Sunday, enjoy the beauty of human beings playing, laughing, eating, drinking, celebrating. That's Im something of the image of God that you will see if you look with eyes of faith. I'm going to end. Um, for many years, I've uh, yearned to be like some of these priests, they have every morning they've got communion. Imagine your life being like that every morning, a priest offering you commun holy communion, 
and you experience the presence of God. For long, I thought, wow, how would that be? Till one morning, I, um, I just woke up and my wife brought me um, a cup. And that was about 12 years ago. This one on the right-hand side there. My wife brought me the cup and the saucer and rusks, that the South African way. Um, and in that moment, I suddenly became aware that this is my Holy Communion every day. But I was absent. So I decided, let me, let me write a poem and I tried to translate it just to, to convey something of what I experienced that morning. Early morning ritual mass. For many years my heart longed for an early morning nourishment of my soul. A daily holy mass serving him to me by a priest of presence. This morning my Emmaus eyes were opened. The everyday sacrament served on a saucer, a warm cup of coffee from my priestess of love for mystical nourishment of my soul. The cup and rusk is your presence served every morning as a holy sacrament. Amen. God's presence is every day like an outstretched finger from every person that we meet. But we are not always present. We are blind, blinded by our egos that God can't be in that person, or blinded by our absence. Please join me in the prayer of confession. All too often, merciful God, we have not recognized your presence amongst us. All too often, we have not seen you in one another, particularly in those we consider different from ourselves. All too often, we have failed in proclaiming to you, to others, through the way that we live and act. Forgive us and open our eyes of faith that we may see you more clearly in the many ways that you come to us. Help us in every, act every our brothers and sisters as we would act towards you. Forgive us when we fail. May we, by your wisdom, recognize and learn from our failures that we may serve our brothers faithfully day to day. Amen. our faith in the words of the Spanish Confession. We believe in God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, creator of all nations and churches, creator of all languages and races. 
We believe in Jesus Christ, His Son, our Lord, God who became flesh as a man for mankind, God who became flesh in time for all time, God who became flesh in one culture for all cultures, God who became flesh in love and grace for all creation. We believe in the Holy Spirit, through whom God announces His presence in Jesus Christ in our people and in our cultures, by whom God, the Creator of all things, gives us the power to become new creatures, while the infinite gifts make us one body, the body of Christ. We believe in the church, which is universal, because it is the sign of God's rule, whose faithfulness is shown in all its shades, while the, all the colors go around, and all the tongues sing the same things. We believe in the rule of God, the day of the great fiesta, when all the colors of creation will form a harmonious rainbow, when all people will participate in a joyful feast, when all tongues of the universe will sing the same song. And because we believe, we commit ourselves to believe for those who do not believe, to love for those who do not love, to dream for those who do not dream until that day of hope comes. Eternity. Amen. You may be seated. The Lord is with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. How deeply, O oh Christ, do I long for a first-hand touch of you, my friend, my Savior, risen and glorious, victorious over the death and, uh, and radiant with luminous life. Oh, how easily does my yearning arise to have been one of those in the upper room when you returned in resurrected form. I know that my faith would be strong if, like Mary in the garden, I had reached out to hug your living presence on Easter morning. I do not doubt that the quality of my zeal had a broken bread with you at that sunset on the Emmaus Road. It's not easy to be among the living, faithful, fed by second-hand accounts of your resurrection visit, even though they've been passed along with loving care for millenniums, mouth to mouth. But I take hope today that I too can taste and feel your fulfilled present promise. I am with you always, even to the end. Every time I break bread with friends or strangers or encounter kindness, on my daily by roads, when I'm visited by you, even though my inner doors are locked in fear, let my heart be as open as the horizon for the feast of the visit from you, my risen Savior. Free me from the limitations of yesterday. Today, may I be reborn. May I become more fully reflection of your radiance. Give me strength and compassion and courage and wisdom. <clears throat> Show me the light in myself and others. May I recognize the good that is available everywhere. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Lead me. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is now gone. <clears throat> <clears throat> Let us end with the Lord's Prayer. <clears throat> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Power and the glory. <clears throat> Amen. 
Lord hear us if we pray, when we pray for Kay Bowder on the death of her husband Russell and Carolyn Cromer, Mario Forte, Charlie Reeder, Sharon Ryder and all our homebound members and everyone who has been affected by the pandemic, all refugees, victims of natural disasters, war and violence. Amen. is back I can say the benediction I love to say the benediction from the beautiful prayer that Paul prayed to the Ephesians in Ephesians 3 verse 16 I pray that according to the riches of his glory that he may grant you this, that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through the Holy Spirit and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth, to know the love of Christ surpassing knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him, who by his power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more that we can ask or imagine. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all the generations forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> 